Juggernaut Live! This is the main event of the evening! It's me! Hello, people. We're a little bit later than planned. I apologize for that. I had an impromptu quake session and some overtime work to do, so I was a little bit behind. Little bit behind. But a promise is a promise indeed. So here I am with the stream. It might be 2 a.m. We're having a late night sesh. What better way to spend a Friday morning now over here in the UK? Excuse me if I talk while I eat. I haven't had any lunch today or dinner. So I just got a sandwich next to me. I'll pick at it as I go. Perfect for you ASMR fans out there. You want to hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be lovely. It's going to be one of those types of streams. I got my beer, I got my food, I got my games ready to go. Gran Turismo doesn't look like it's going to freaking work today. So let's try Gran Turismo 2 and see if we can get any action out of that. No, it's going to be one of those sodding days, isn't it? No, no joy on either Gran Turismo. Let's try a different MU. Let's see if this is going to do the job for us. Okay, controller at the ready. GT loading up. Let's try the first one again. Ah, uh, Gran Turismo. No, insert CD image. Come on. CD not usable. Okay, let's try. Um, let's just try the bin file then. Okay. Well, that seems to have worked. Yabba, dabba, do. Oh, white lines. Blow away. Yeah, Retro Watch, I'm not a big fan of. It doesn't work with half of my stuff. When you're quite ready, game. Sony. Yeah. That was absolutely fucking mind blowing back when this game first came out. Gran Turismo was like nothing we'd ever seen on the PlayStation. It was just a whole other level. That intro just got you hyped. The game got you hyped. The excitement behind this game was paramount. Uh, it was just phenomenal. Unfortunately, it's going to give me a content ID strike, but I've had one every day throughout streaming these games every day for the last two weeks. So, what's another one? Yeah. I'm going to talk over it a little bit in the hope that the content ID is not too severe. Yeah. 
yeah, this this game was something else at the time. Have we seen enough of the intro yet, or do you want it to continue? We're cutting into precious game time. You can't hear the audio from the game. Um, oh, that'll be why, because I muted it by accident. Oops. Oops, a daisy. My bad. Oh well. Maybe I won't get a content ID strike this time then. <clears throat> so we're going to skip simulation mode. We're just going to go straight into arcade. Sim mode takes far too long for the uh, purposes that that we're using. Let's go for a Nissan Skyline. One of my favourite cars ever. It's got to be the old blue one, right? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do. Let's do Trial Mountain. second I haven't got my dual shock mode set so let me just adjust that let me just switch to dual shock yeah there we go that's more like it after playing so many arcade races I was playing wipeout yesterday this feels so stiff in comparison <laughs> Going from an arcade game to a sim. Look how beautiful this game was back in the day. Oh, it was a looker. A real looker. Just the, the reflections on the car. Like, okay, they were pre-baked, but they still look really, really cool. Nothing wrong with fridge steering. Fridge racer! too hard just trying to get going but yeah the more I push the further behind I get can't catch up Out my way. I'm not coming last. Screw you. What do I think of Fallout 76? I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Um, I'm a bit concerned because it's not being you know, fine-tuned and, and honed to the brilliant story type of game that we've seen before in Fallout. I think people might camp. I think people might be just general douchebags playing that game. But if you get a proper LARP type of group with you, I reckon it can be really, really special. So I'm reserving judgment. I'm, I pre-ordered it. I'm going to look at it. 
but uh, I don't have highest of high hopes. I'm more excited about Doom Eternal, to be perfectly honest with you. Doom Eternal, whoa. Even though it was a teaser trailer, whoa. Yeah, yeah. How on earth? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I won that game quite badly. Um, I also really want to play Cyberpunk. And I also really want to play that, that handheld uh, Elder Scrolls game, the Elder Scrolls Blade. I think that looks really cool. What else did they show? Rage 2 looks better every time I see it. It looks like Borderlands meets Doom, and that, that wins for me. That wins hands down. Um, I'm also interested in their next-gen space exploration one. I'm a big space exploration nut. I love Elite, I love um, Star Citizen, I love Wing Commander. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that game really appeals to my interests. Um, what else did they show? Oh yeah, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Wow, I can't believe they've announced a sequel to that already, you know? Uh, Wolfenstein 2 only just came out. Um, and to, to get a sequel going that fast, oh, I'm, I'm really pumped. Wolfenstein 1 and 2 were very pleasant surprises for me. So, uh, so yeah, lots to look forward to from Bethesda. Lots to look forward to. Okay, so let's do a different race. A different car. Do an easy one to make me look better. Let's do an Aston Martin. What's your reckon? Yeah, that'll do. Let's do the Clubman race course. Yeah, Wolfenstein, they, they did some great games. The the first reboot, the Return to Castle Wolfenstein, the Return to Castle Wolfenstein was great. Then they did another reboot just called Wolfenstein. Not so great. And then the New Blood and the New Order were fantastic. And then Wolfenstein 2, the New Colossus was, yeah, just... Oh, phenomenal. Phenomenal games. Really, really pleasantly surprised by those. Not quite Doom 2016 material, but not far off it. Had a good time playing those. And on the Xbox One X, oh, it looked amazing. 4K, 60 frames a second, look the business. My favourite Fallout game? Fallout 3. Really, really enjoyed Fallout 3. I liked Fallout New Vegas as well. Didn't really get into Fallout 4. Uh, Fallout 1 and 2 I did enjoy as well, and Fallout Tactics. But Fallout 3 I played for hundreds of hours. Got really into it. Oblivion more than Skyrim. Well, when Skyrim came out, my first son was born. 
so I didn't really get to play Skyrim. <gasps> I know, losing my game of credentials. I played it for about 20 minutes, and that's it. But uh, Oblivion, I've played for 400 hours. And Morrowind, I've played for probably about the same amount of time. Um, I think I prefer Morrowind to Oblivion, but Oblivion was graphically awe-inspiring when that came out. And the procedurally generated stuff was cool. Um, not on 11-11-2011, no, my son was born on April, April 9th, 2011. So we were right in the midst of, you know, poopy nappies, bottle feeding, all that stuff. Much like we are with my new son, you know, my third son. Which means RPGs scare me right now, I don't have the time to play them. But there are some stunning RPGs coming out soon. I can't wait to get my teeth on Cyberpunk. Oh. And Beyond Good and Evil 2. That looks fantastic. Uh, Metro... Well, it's not really an RPG, but Metro Exodus. Looks really good. So many games, so little cash. Should we go for a Honda? Good fight! A Honda. A Red Integra Type R. Yeah, Red Dead's coming. Yeah, Red Dead 2. I will be all over that. Like a rash. What do I think of point and click games like Monkey Island? Absolutely love them when they're done brilliantly. Monkey Island 1, Monkey Island 2. Top notch, top draw, love them the bits. Curse of Monkey Island, love that to bits too. Walking Dead, the Dawn. Got really hooked on the Walking Dead games. Um, but the lesser runs, like Simon the Sorcerer, didn't really care for. Broken Sword was a good one, or at least the first two were. I kind of lost interest after that. Uh, Sam and Max, the first one again, really grabbed me. Didn't like the episodic ones quite so much. But one of my favourite point-and-click games is um, it's fairly obscure. It's called The Dig, and it was actually going to be a movie, but they turned it into a game instead. It's got quite an adult theme for point and click, it's very serious, but it's got this weird unsettling feeling behind me, the locations and the people you meet. And it really, really drew me in. I loved it. Oh, Dark Seed was another one. Dark Seed was a HR Giga inspired horror point and click game, which was yeah, eye opening to say the least. Shadowrun's not really a point and click game, is it though, really? Um, the first games, the Shadowrun games on the Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive as I know it, um, was, was more of an action RPG. The SNES version was an isometric action RPG. The Sega CD one was all in Japanese, but that was kind of a, a point and click Snatcher-esque RPG. But because it wasn't in English, I didn't really enjoy it. And then of course it went into first and third person shooter mops, which I think are excellent games. And they get shot on for no reason. Shadow Run on the Xbox and the, then the, uh, the PC. Oh, it was so good. I loved that game. Played it for years. Did I ever play Where in the World is Calm and Santiago? Uh, not the first time around, no. Uh, the first time I played Carmen Santiago was uh, when when I did my PC Engine top list. Really, there was a there was a Carmen Santiago on that, so I played it as an adult, not a kid. And of course, being an adult, I couldn't see what the appeal was. It was it never really took off here in the UK. That's enough recording for GT1. Anyway, let's move on to GT2. Let me just get it going. 
grand, grand, grand turismo. A grand turismo. Here we go. No, unable to open file. What are you on about? Try that again. There we go. Dominic, they're already on. They're already on, my friend. There's the, um, there's a historical computer museum, which shows Every box, every magazine, every manual, they do some amazing work. Um, seeing that happen I like seeing stuff preserved I like seeing stuff released to the public if possible but just knowing it's preserved um, and we see some assets from the game you know see the games running see the box art see the manuals you know because a video game isn't just what you play it's what you see it's what you read uh, some games like the Ultima series, for example, they have cloth maps in the boxes and coins, and it's all part of the experience of playing, you know, opening up and exploring what's inside the articles that you buy for your money. It's not just all about a disc, in it goes, and you play. It's all about the online experience, too. Uh, Dominic, now I don't follow John Hancock, but I know of him. Yeah. He's a big collector, he's got a load of complete sets. Quite envious of some of his sets. Now what's going on with this? He's not got everything. I know that for a fact. I have a few things that he doesn't. And there's a guy in Australia. I've forgotten his name. I think his name's Joel. But he has a one-of-a-kind that makes everybody insanely jealous of. He has a one-of-a-kind Ultra 64. Not Nintendo 64. Ultra 64.
Yeah, he has a great idea about setting his collection into a museum, and I believe he does loan out some of his pieces to local museums for exhibits, which is a really cool thing for him to do. I have hats off to the guy for that. Do I collect the hardware? Yeah, for the hardware I'm interested in, I do, yeah. I've got about 50 consoles at this point. Maybe maybe 60. Plus the handhelds and stuff. Um, I don't collect anywhere as much as I used to. Because wife, because kids. Kind of lack of finances. Um, yeah, I can't collect as much as I used to. Uh, but... Say for example, for the Xbox 360, I've got over a thousand games for the Xbox 360. Stuff like that. But nowadays, for my Xbox One, which is my main format aside from PC, um, I maybe have 100, maybe 200 games. So my, my collecting has dropped right down. Purely because of time constraints and family finance constraints and space and I work shifts so my, my job I changed my job a while ago um, when I got injured I got injured a little while back um, and hurt my arm and my leg and left me partially disabled um, so I had to change career I was in IT and of course with IT you have a bit more expendable income but now I work in um, in in the gambling industry I work as one of the people who make sure that you gamble responsibly and and you uh, we, we, we hold our duties up and against laws and regs and, and so on and so forth to make sure that we're adhering to protocols and guidelines. But it's shift work because a lot of people gamble at night, right? So, yeah, I, I have less free time and that free time is torn more between family, kids and, and gaming. So I have much less time to play. Which is why it takes me so long to release a new video, because, yeah, I might only get an hour or two here and there to, to actually do it. You run a speakeasy? No, no I don't run a speakeasy. I run a, a fairly high profile, well, I'm part of a fairly high profile online casino company here in the UK we're advertised on TV we have some big licensing deals it's a lot of work a lot of pressure but at the end of the day I help people because I stop them from getting themselves into debt and into trouble you know some people are just addictive people by nature uh, my job is to identify any potential risk with players and intervene before it gets out of hand. Uh, on the downside of that, sometimes it's already gotten out of hand and we have to think of things like suicide prevention, stuff, you know, nasty things. Uh, do welfare checks on players that threaten to kill themselves and so on and so forth. Uh, when they're really heavy gambling addicts and they spend their life savings away. Um, so it's, it can be quite hard, but then again, the guys I work with are great. Um, I get on really well with them. I get on really well with everyone, so... I would say good times, but it's work. You know? And it doesn't pay anywhere near as much as IT did. That's me eating my sandwich. Do I miss a single life? Sometimes. 
And then I look at my kids and I look at my wife and I realise how lucky I am. Um, at the end of the day, games are fun and all, but they're just games, you know. My kids, teaching them gives me much more joy than playing a video game does now. Watching them learn, watching them thrive, it's like nothing else on the planet. Seeing them smile, you know. When you come home and you hear a chorus of, Daddy! Daddy! It's just, it's... I, I couldn't change it. I'd never change it. And besides, late at night when they're tucked up in bed and wifey's fast asleep, that's my time and I can play video games then. I don't need sleep. Who needs sleep? I can survive on four hours, maybe three at a push. That gives me some more game time. That's why I'm up at 2.30 in the morning on a Friday. Okay. Should we do a rally? Yeah, let's do a rally. Can't think straight without your beauty rest. Well, I get used to it. At first it was really hard, but after a while, you kind of get used to living on six hours sleep. I wouldn't want to do four hours every night. But six I can live quite comfortably on. Everybody, of course, has their own limit, but for me, six is good. Um, I can go down to four when necessary. I can function on four. Anything less than four and I'm a mess. But, and I can't do four, like, every day. But six, I can do every day. No problem. Of course, this was the best addition for Gran Turismo 2, the rally mode. Easy left, maybe. Easy right, over jump. It's never going to be a Sega rally. But, they tried. I've got to get used to swinging my car around the corner. Get that handbrake into gear. Yep. Feels way different to a road, as you'd expect. Yeah, I know in America it's all nez, 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 nez. Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo. It got to the point where video games were synonymous with Nintendo. You wouldn't go play video games, you'd go play Nintendo. But the Master System had some good stuff. It really did. And technically, it pissed all over the list. You know, technically, it had better colours, better sound, it had better technical wizardry in there. But the NES was popular, and it was cheap, and it was mass-marketed, and it worked a beauty. And it had some incredible games too. Yeah, I love the Streets of Rage games. People say they suck, but I disagree totally. Sound is arguably better on NES. Well, I've got to disagree with you there, Dominic. The FM chip on the Master System blows the NES out of the water. The NES was, had its signature sound, don't get me wrong. The NES sound chip reminds me a lot of the SID chip on the Commodore 64. It had a unique kind of sound to it, and you can tell a NES track from a mile away. And it sounds really, really nice, but on a technical level, the FM sound on the Master System absolutely knocked it out of the water. Of course, not every game supported the FM module, but those that did, yeah. Oh, 
I'm a huge 64 fan. I started my life with a ZX Spectrum. I was three years old when I had a ZX. And the ZX has a very special place in my heart. But let's face facts, the Commodore 64 absolutely stomped all over it. And part of that was due to the SID chip and that iconic music in so many games of the 80s. Thing on a Spring, for example. Commando, yeah, um, what else? Turrican. It, it was just, whoa. Made your ears melt with giddy delight. And then, of course, that followed on with the Commodore Amiga and its modular sound, which absolutely blew every competition out of the water for several years. You know, the Atari ST, while it was brilliant for making commercial music, not so good for game music. And the system wasn't capable of catching up to what the Amiga was capable of doing. Unfortunately, that meant that the Amiga suffered a lot with Atari ST ports. Uh, we got a lot of Atari ST ports without using the Amiga's additional features, but those games that did use the Amiga's features were absolutely mind-bendingly awesome. When would you say the PC surpassed the Amiga? 1992, when Wolfenstein came out. The tail end of 1991, you had Catacombs 3D and these new uh, genres emerging. And the Amiga was holding its own for a while, but then people saw Wolfenstein and the scaling, the speed, the sound, the, uh, the maturity of the game as well. And the Amiga just couldn't quite catch up. And then Doom followed and Doom set the world on fire and the Amiga had no answer for it. Yeah, I've seen Quake 2 run on a custom Amiga, I've seen it run on vampire boards. But that's additional hardware, that's not a real Amiga if you ask me. You know, when you compare it... In 92, we didn't even have the AGA Amigas. We would have had the Amiga 500 Plus at that stage. So, an enhanced chipset. Not even an AGA chipset. And seeing Wolfenstein just... just yeah, it was, a, it was a whole other ball game. And then we brought the AGA chipset out for the Amiga and it kind of caught up again for a while. Uh, and then, as I say, Doom came out and rocked everybody's socks off. Did any Amiga use VGA? No, they used RGB. I think the 1200 had a VGA socket, but most people used RGB. Or, or modulation to run on the TV. And the Amiga holds a very special place in my heart. It's one of my favourite machines of all time. I've seen an MP3 run on an Amiga. Yes, I have. Yep. On my Amiga 1200 setup, I can run MP3s. Why you'd want to, though, is a different matter altogether. There's so many easier ways of playing an MP3. I just open up VLC, for example, and there we go. Bam. Done. Have you seen a ZX Spectrum run a movie? That is the question. Or have you seen a ZX81 run Dragon's Lair? Technically impressive feats. But whether you'd actually want to? Different story. Now how many laps have I got to do this thing for? Feels like it's been dragging on for a while. Since when has Rally been racing in a loop?
Uh, you can watch a movie in more than two or three colours. The Spectrum had seven or eight colours available, and it had different shades of those seven colours. So you could realistically get 20 or 30 colours out of it. But then with dithering, you could um, you could add more. What did I think of Sega Rally Revo? Yeah, it was good. But it was no Sega Rally, if you ask me. It didn't feel like Sega Rally. And Sega Rally 2 veered enough from the first game to make it almost not feel like Sega Rally. But then Sega Rally 2006 came out, that was pretty solid. But Revo, yeah, I, I like the fact that you could dig your wheels into the dirt and that would affect your traction. But other than that, it, it didn't quite feel like Sega Rally. It just felt like any old body's rally, if you know what I mean. No, I don't use the steering wheel for my games. I can't be asked to set them up. I've bought loads of steering wheels in the past, but... Yeah, this this the setup that just... Just takes too long for me. So I just grab the immediacy of a controller and away we go. Now I don't know if you've ever seen the Dreamcast system for the Sega Dreamcast, but if you run Gran Turismo on Dreamcast using the Dreamcast software, wow, that game still polishes up and looks wonderful. But this for a PlayStation looked phenomenal. You know, at, at this point, what was this game coming out? 1999? So we're looking at, well, five-year-old hardware at this point. Did I like the darkness? Yes, I did. I really liked the darkness. And I also enjoyed the darkness too. But I preferred the first one. Why does PC miss out on ports like that one or Condemned 2? But the PC got the darkness too. But it didn't get... Didn't it not get Condemned 2? No, it didn't, did it? I'm guessing because Condemned 1 didn't sell very well. Simple as that on PC. Um, which is a shame because it was a wonderful game, a wonderful exclusive for the for the Xbox. One of the the early games that really showed what that system could do. But there we go. I think that's enough Gran Turismo for one night. Duty three. Mm. Play Medal of Honor next. Well, unfortunately, as it's three AM. I've really got to call it a day there. I know tonight was going to be a long stream, but work got in the way. Um, so unfortunately, that will have to be postponed until tomorrow night. So tomorrow night, we will have a long stream. 
I'll start about 9 or 10 p.m. UK GMT time and then we'll play through again till about 3 in the morning because I don't have work till 3 in the afternoon. So, uh, so yeah, for, for tonight, I'm going to have to cut it there because I'm getting a bit tired. Um, so tomorrow night we'll do a long stream. As I said on my Twitter account, which is at Juggernaut, uh, give me a few games that you want me to play tomorrow and we'll kind of plan for once, yeah. Actually plan what we're going to play for once, yeah? Would that be would that be cool? Um, rather than me just picking games at random, I'm I'm gonna let anybody who wants to tweet me with game suggestions go ahead and tweet me, and I will compile a list, and we will go through that list. So when I go live, you will see that list, so you know what's on the cards in the future for tonight or that night, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, until next time, people. I hope you had a good time, even though it was a brief one. And I'll probably see you tomorrow night. Bye for now.